Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, Subtropical Storm Patty is moving through the Azores and we have Disturbance 1 potentially forming in the Caribbean and moving towards the Gulf of Mexico. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to TropicalTibbets.com for Sunday, November 3rd, 2024. The Black Arrow is Disturbance 1, invest 97L now in the Caribbean, potentially becoming our next name storm. Disturbance 2 is in pink. We have an area of vorticity just east of Disturbance 2 by our purple arrow that's going to interact with its moisture with Disturbance 2. We have a tropical wave in blue moving just north of Suriname and Guyana. And then we have subtropical storm Patty moving through the Azores Islands by our red arrow on the top right of your screen. So here's the vorticity, the spin and energy in the atmosphere associated with all those that we just pointed out with our arrows on our satellite image. And you can see this stretched out vorticity of both disturbance one and two in the Caribbean near just north of Panama and then through Hispaniola and going north into the Atlantic. And then this little circular structure to its right, that's going to interact with this stretched out uh, frontal boundary and potentially spin up a potential tropical system as well as the other half of it combines with Disturbance 1 and potentially becomes Raphael as it moves towards Jamaica, Cuba, and then eventually the Gulf of Mexico. So here is Subtropical Storm Patty as it's working its way through the Azores Islands, bringing some squally weather to the region. It's going to be working its way towards Portugal and Spain over the next couple of days, but most likely as an extra tropical system as the waters here are cooler and it's going to be increasing its wind shear. Here is one of our tropical waves that we're monitoring for possible development, but right now the models aren't quite picking up on it, but some of the ensemble models do have some support for it. Here is a combination of Disturbance 2 to our left and the stretched out vorticity and thunderstorm activity to the right associated with our other circular vorticity that will later potentially, with the, according to the models, spin up into something. Disturbance 2, the western portion of it, has a 10% chance of developing before combining with Disturbance 1 over the next 2 and 7 days. Disturbance 1, also known as Invest 97L now, according to the National Hurricane Center, will become the more dominant feature in the Caribbean over the next couple of days and the greatest chance of becoming Raphael over the next two and seven days. We are up to 80% now over the next two days and 90% over the next seven days. So everywhere in the Western Caribbean, so Jamaica, Cayman Islands, uh, Cuba, and then points north and west from there potentially could be in the line of this storm. Here's the spaghetti track guidance models showing where this can go. As you can see over Jamaica, over the Cayman Islands, the western portions of Cuba, and then the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And from there, it's a crapshoot. Does it go back towards Florida? Does it head towards Alabama, Mississippi, or Louisiana? Or does it linger around a little bit longer or move quicker and maybe even get to Texas. But right now I think Texas is safe because we'll have a frontal boundary that's going to be coming through and then push this back towards the east and also weaken it at the same time. So here's the model intensity guidance showing that this one could peak out as a strong tropical storm, maybe a Cat 1 hurricane. So let's look at seeing how that's going to play out. We'll use the GFS model at the 850 cyclonic vorticity, so spin and energy in the atmosphere. This is about a 5,000 feet up. The black hexagon is 97L, pink is disturbance 2, red is patty, and then purple and blue are our tropical wave and vorticity maxes. Upper level environment around our black hexagon, you can see the developing upper level ridge that's going to allow for the expansion of the air in the upper levels of the atmosphere causing contraction 
in the lower levels, and that creates that cyclonic spin in the atmosphere developing our low pressure system. But the outflow from the black hexagon will hamper development of disturbance to our pink hexagon because of the increased wind shear. So those two are really going to absorb into each other as disturbance 197L moves north. And you can see the moisture associated with all of our entities. So two days from now, on Tuesday, November 5th, Disturbance 2 has been absorbed into 97L, most likely Raphael at this point, as it's moved across Jamaica, towards the Cayman Islands, and then eventually towards western Cuba, as it goes around our Bermuda Azores High, which is just to its north, that big circle that you see there. Our vorticity max is interacting with that moisture and stretched out vorticity from disturbance to the eastern half of it at least. And it potentially, at least on this model, develops a tight vorticity ball, which will then also backtrack around our Bermuda Azores high as it goes clockwise. And then our tropical wave in blue is trying to develop as well. And the remnants of Paddy have made its way towards the Iberian Peninsula. Upper level environment shows favorability for Raphael to continue to maintain its strength and maybe get to a Cat 1 hurricane because of low wind shear environment. And it's got a ton of moisture to work with as it's being brought up from South America. So then we get the four days from now and we see that, like I said, now Raphael invests 97L will be in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, at least on this model run. And then we see the high pressure to its east, so it's not going to go east uh, initially, but depending on how fast it goes, we'll continue moving to the northwest, at least on this model run, towards Mississippi, Alabama, or Louisiana, most likely. <clears throat> Our purple hexagon is now backtracking, because you can see how the stretched out uh, isobars of the Bermuda Azores High has filled in a, across the Atlantic so that's causing it to move back to the west instead of out to sea and our tropical wave is right behind it. So on day five we see 97L working its way towards Louisiana and Mississippi. Our next potential disturbance moving towards the Turks and Caicos where disturbance two is today and our tropical wave entering the Caribbean islands as we speak, uh, five days from now, at least on this model run. Now, Invest 97L, when it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, will likely be weakening at this point, not because the Gulf of Mexico is not warm enough, but because we're going to have this approaching frontal boundary. As you see, we have an upper level trough moving in with the subtropical jet. That's going to cause a great amount of wind shear and wind shear is the death knell of tropical storms, and that's going to cause a lot of dry air to infiltrate and weaken the system as it approaches Louisiana and the Gulf Coast. So by the time it makes landfall on next Saturday, November 9th, at least on this model run, it's a weakened tropical storm, just a, maybe a big rainmaker for points east of it because the dry air is pushing all the rain to the north and east with that subtropical jet and we'll keep an eye on this disturbance if it will form and move through the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos and maybe even Cuba as we are watching it on this model. As you can see here a week from now potentially through the Florida Straits as well. In terms of development of our blue tropical wave, you can see it's going to be running into a wall of wind shear, so it's unlikely, at least on this model run, to move to develop. But there's light wind shear in the Caribbean, and moisture will be rebounding in the wake of 97L, so potentially we'll have to still need to continue to watch this region for future development as we go deeper into the month of November. In terms of what the European model is showing us, pretty much similar. We see disturbance 1 and 2 combined to potentially Raphael move into the Gulf of Mexico. And we'll watch the remnants of the eastern half of disturbance 2 maybe form at that other vorticity max 
into a potential tropical storm moving through the Caribbean next week. So here's the ensemble models showing the support for all of our tropical entities over the next seven days. Biggest threat will be Disturbance 1 Invest 97L becoming Raphael and moving into the Gulf and western portions of the Caribbean. So we'll continue to monitor Invest 97L as it goes north towards Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Cuba, and eventually the Gulf of Mexico, and then which Gulf states will be impacted depending on the timing of that cold front. Disturbance 2 will combine with Invest 97L. Patty's going to be bringing impacts to the Iberian Peninsula in about two days' time as an extra tropical system. And then we'll track our next disturbance and tropical wave behind it. Next name on the list again would be Raphael. If our other disturbance tries to form it, we'll gain the name of Sarah. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you knew and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.